Hello student, this is uh, the second video on the second chapter of movement, the adventures of Toto. In the previous video, you have seen that uh, Toto was bought by a grandfather from a Tonga driver for the sum of uh, 5 rupees. And uh, he was initially kept in a closet uh, where he tore all the wallpapers and he also tore the blazer of the author. The grandmother was... Uh, not aware of uh, buying of uh, Toto and uh, when grandfather uh, went to Saranpur to collect his pension uh, Toto was taken in a kit bag uh, but then uh, at the station uh, grandfather had to pay uh, some of rupees uh, 3 as a charge to the ticket collector and uh, up to here we have learned now we are going we are just proceeding further so when Toto was finally accepted by grandmother he was given a comfortable home in the stable so you know that uh, grandmother was not initially told about uh, the buying of uh, Toto but when uh, it was uh, informed that uh, about the Toto, then grandmother accepted it and then he was given a comfortable home in stable. Stable is a place where horses or donkeys are kept. So where he had uh, for a companion the family donkey. So there was a family donkey and uh, uh, this uh, Toto had uh, this uh, donkey as his companion and name of the donkey was Nana. On Toto's first night in the stable, grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was comfortable. So, on the very first night uh, when Toto was put uh, in the stable, grandfather went uh, to see how Toto was doing there. Is he comfortable or not? So, to his surprise, he found Nana without apparent cause pulling at her halter to try to keep her head as far as possible from the bundle of hay. So, when uh, grandfather uh, reached the stable, so he found that Nana, Nana is a donkey. To his surprise, he found that Nana without any apparent cause, without any clear cause or any clear reason Nana found that this donkey was pulling at her falter falter means it's a strap or rope that is placed around the head of the horse or other animal in order to in order to control them or to lead them or to tethering them okay so this was pulling at her this donkey was pulling at her halter and it was trying to keep her head as far as possible from the bundle of hay. What is this bundle of hay? Bundle of hay is a fodder, you can say, or food of the animal. Okay. So it was keeping herself away from this food and that too without any apparent reason, without any clearly seen reason. Means the grandmother, uh, grandfather was unable to see why this donkey was behaving so, why the donkey was pulling at her halter, and why it was keeping herself away from the bundle of hay. Rather, an animal uh, should eat the hay. Okay. So grandfather gave Nana a slap across her haunches. Haunches is the hind part of an animal. Okay, back part you can see. Okay, so give a slap across her haunches and she jogged back, but still she didn't, you know, move forward. Still she jogged back or pulled herself back, dragging Toto with her. And this time, grandfather showed that when this donkey pulled her back, she dragged Toto also with her. And why it is so? He had fastened onto her long ears with his sharp little teeth because this Toto was uh, clinching himself uh, on the ears of Nana, the donkey. 
uh, with his uh, sharp little teeth so you can see this year also he didn't stop himself doing some mischief okay he was uh, a troublesome for this nana also and that's why he was pulling back or he was just uh, uh, pulling at the halter because this monkey was uh, was a nuisance for nana he was creating some trouble for him okay so then toto and nana never became friends obviously it is anticipated a great treat for toto during cold winter evening was the large ball of water given him by grand mother for his bath so a great treat for toto toto a treat means you can say a moment of uh, enjoyment or pleasure okay so a great treat a great moment of enjoyment for toto during cold winter evening was a large ball of warm water given him by grandmother for his bath means grandmother grandmother used to give this toto a ball of warm water for him to take bath in that and that's why it was uh, it, it is said that it was a great moment of enjoyment for him he would cunningly test uh, the temperature with his hand so cunningly means very cleverly so he used to test the temperature whether the temperature was okay for him to set in the ball or not and then gradually step into the bath so after checking that you know after testing the temperature he used uh, he used to you know step into the bath first one foot then the other foot as he had seen me doing so where did he copied this he copied this he imitate he imitates this uh, by seeing the author as is given as he had seen me doing so this way the author also used to take bath so same thing he followed so until he was into the water up to the his neck so he step into the bath first first one foot and then another then he another you know, whole body is in the bath until he is there into the water up to his neck so once comfortable once he is comfortable in the bath or in the tub or in the bowl he would take the soap in his hands or feet and rub himself all over so this all he is imitating by seeing author or other family members as they are doing he also followed the same uh, fashion so when the water became cold uh, he would uh, get out and run as quickly as he could do to the kitchen fire in order to dry himself so when the water in the bowl get cold so he used to get out of that bowl and run to the kitchen fire in order to get himself dry if anyone laughed at him during this performance toto feelings would be hurt and he would refuse to go on with his bath so animal seems to be quite clever seems to be quite intelligent if anyone he can even uh, you know recognize the feeling of other people so if one anyone laughed so he get annoyed his feeling would get hurt and he refused to go on with his bath one day totally uh, toto nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive now here one incident is mentioned here by the author and they said that one day he was nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive so how he was nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive here is given a large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for tea so there was a large kettle that was placed on the fire and water was there in the kettle and this was meant to make a tea and it was put on the fire in order to make tea or to make uh, water boil there 
So Toto finding himself with nothing better to do when he found that he has nothing to do, uh, nothing to do. So what he do? He decided to remove the lid. Lid mean the cover of the kettle. So he removed the lid, finding the water just warm enough for bath, and he found that the water inside the kettle was uh, warm enough for uh, warm enough for him to bath. He got in. So he placed himself into the kettle and with his head sticking out from the open kettle. So as usual, uh, he used to you know take bath in the bowl. So this time also the water in the kettle was uh, you know warm enough for him to take bath and he got into the kettle. But the difference was that this time the kettle was, uh, it was not a ball, it was a kettle which was placed on the fire. Okay, so this just uh, fine for a while. This was just fine for a while, I means so long as the water was warm enough for him to tolerate, it was fine for him until the water began to boil. So until the water began to boil, it was fine for him to enjoy that warm water and Toto then raised himself a little means when the water started boiling the temperature of water started increasing so he raised himself a little from the water okay but finding it cold outside sat down again but when he found that outside it's a cold he again you know, lowered down himself into the water he continued hopping up and down for some time so for the some time, he couldn't decide that whether he should uh, come out of the kettle or not because inside the water was getting hotter and hotter. But when he wanted to come out, he finds that okay, it's a cold outside. He should remain inside the kettle only. So he was uh, just uh, confused whether to come out or not. And for that sake, uh, he was just uh, for some time, he continued hopping up and down until grandmother arrived and hauled him half boiled out of kettle so he kept on you know coming uh, you know raising himself up and again lowering down into the water until grandma uh, grandmother reached there and she hauled hauled means pulled pulled so until she pulled him half boiled out of the kettle. So this is how he succeeded. Near, he nearly succeeded to boil him. So he get into the boiling water of the kettle, and he wanted to come out, but finding outside, uh, you know, cold. He remained there for a long time, and this is how this happened. So, if there is a part of the brain especially devoted to mischief, that part was lar largely developed in Toto. So, what does this mean? The author says that if there is any part of the brain especially devoted to mischief, you might have learned in science that our brain has been divided into different parts and different parts are, you know, do different function in our body. Some parts are for the, uh, you know, retaining memory. Some parts are to control our vital organs. Uh, so that's why it is say that okay, if uh, any part of the brain is uh, devoted to mischief, uh, that part was lar largely developed in Toto. Mean to say that uh, his brain was quite developed uh, in order to do mischief. So he was always tearing things to pieces. This I already mentioned many times. Okay, whenever one of my aunts came near him, he made every effort to get hold of her dress and tear a hole in it. Now here are some more mischiefs been mentioned here of uh, Toto, and it is mentioned that uh, whenever one of his aunts, one of aunts of author, you know, came near him. He always made every effort to get hold of her dress and tear a hole in it, make a hole in it. One day at lunchtime, 
a large dish of pulao stood in the center of the dining table. Pulao, I hope you understand. I think this is Hindi word. Okay, it's a variety of, you know, it's a rice or dish of the rice, or different dish of the rice. Okay. So this pulao was kept at the center of the dining table. We entered the room to find Toto stuffing himself with the rice. Okay, when the family members enter the room, they found that Toto was stuffing, means the Toto was eating the rice. He was stuffing himself with rice, means he was eating rice. My grandmother screamed. Screamed means shouted or yelled. And Toto threw a plate at her. So you can see that how mischievous he has grown when grandmother screamed in response to that Toto threw a plate at her. One of my aunt rushed forward. Rushed forward means moved or ran forward and received a glass of water in the face. So when this aunt moved forward this Toto threw water in the face of the aunt. When grandfather arrived, Toto picked up the dish of plow and made his exit through a window. So when Toto found entering grandfather into the room, he picked up the dish. This means plate. Here it means plate. So he picked up the plate of plow and he went out of the room through the window. We found him in the branches of the jackfruit tree. Jackfruit is a type of tree. Okay, cut hull. Okay, this we call. So the dish is still in his arms. The dish was still in his arm. The plate was still in his arm. He was holding that plate. He remained there all afternoon, eating slowly through the rice. So he kept on eating slowly the rice and determined on finishing every grain. He finished every grain of the plow. And then in order to spite grandmother, spite means to annoy someone or to tease someone or to offend someone because grandmother had screamed at him. So that's why in order to annoy her, in order to offend her, what did he do? Okay, who had screamed at him given? Okay, he threw the dish down from the tree and chattered with delight when it broke into hundred pieces. Chattered. Chattered means making some noise, chattering sound. Okay, so in order to annoy grandmother who had screamed at him, he threw the plate from the tree and threw it down and he chattered, he made some delight. He, he makes some uh, you know, noises with the delight when it broke into the hundred pieces. So obviously Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long. So seeing the mischiefs of Toto, he became unbearable in the family. He occurred many losses to the family by tearing things, by throwing things, by breaking things. So here, ultimately, the author says that Toto was not a kind of pet. He was not such a pet that he could be kept for long in the family. So even grandfather realized that. So initially, grandfather seemed to be very tolerant. He didn't get angry when even Toto tore the blazers of author and when he tore apart all the you know wallpapers and this all but now grandfather also realized that he was not a kind of you know, animal that should be kept for any long with the family and we were not well to do well to do means wealthy or rich people okay so they were not that much rich and could not afford the frequent loss of dishes clothes curtains and wallpapers. 
So they were not that much rich that ke, they can afford the losses of these many articles like this is plates, utensils, cloths, curtain and wallpaper that he has uh, just uh, torn them or they, uh, he has just uh, broken them. Okay. So grandfather found the Tonga driver, the same Tonga driver from, from whom he has bought it and sold the Toto back to him for only 3 rupees. So he bought it for, a, for the sum of 5 rupees but now he sold it for only 3 rupees. So it was given back to the same Tonga driver. So this is how they got rid of this monkey Toto. And the chapter is over. Thank you very much.